Hey guys, it's Guy. So for today, I'm going to go ahead and just jump into this tutorial. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do for today, but I, we're going to go ahead and create as we go. I do have to say I'm a little nervous. I haven't done a tutorial that has me going step by step as I go and creating off the top of my mind. So I'm crossing my fingers. This is going to go ahead and turn out good, but let's go ahead and jump into it. The so first thing I'm going to start off is with the skin. I'm taking the Maybelline Matte Poreless in the shade 320 Golden Door. And I really like this because it does give me a deeper tan and this is about three shades darker than my actual skin tone but I do like to go in with a concealer to highlight the t-zone of my skin and this is going to go ahead and bring attention towards the center of my face so I'll be taking some at the back of my hand maybe just enough to cover my whole face and I'm going to go ahead and begin to dot this around my skin now I usually like to place this where I like to have the most coverage so normally I like to put a little bit more down towards the lower part of my face here just to cover this green tint I have from my beard. So luckily I found this online and I don't know, it doesn't really have a brand name, but it works just as great as the Artiste brushes. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that to buff this foundation in. So this is obviously a few shades darker than my natural skin tone. So I like to go in with this Tarte Shape Tape Concealer and this is in the shade Light Neutral. And this is gonna go ahead and counterbalance and bring the highlight towards the center of my face. I like to apply here. Now I do like to apply a generous amount just because this is much, much darker than the actual shade of my skin tone. So this will really bring attention and light. Now blending that back in with a damp beauty blender. This is just a known beauty blender, but it does the trick for me. So make sure you, it has to be damped in order for this to blend very, very seamlessly in the skin. And I'm just pouncing this, not too forcefully, but just enough so everything will blend very, very smooth. And I will carry this on top of the eyes just to act as my shadow base. But it's nothing new And my lover's honesty I can push it back, push it back down if I have to If you want me to Cause we can so now by doing this, the finished product is gonna make you look like a cream contoured instead of me just going in with different colors. This allows me to give my skin a full coverage and give a nice seamless blend. Now using the original RCMA, Makeup Translucent No Color Setting Powder, I'm gonna go ahead and begin to set my skin and the areas that I normally just highlighted. That same beauty blender, I'm just pressing very, very lightly into the skin. And I'm only applying this the areas that I use highlight. This step is gonna go ahead and keep everything from creasing and wearing off or transfer. The most important is transfer it to anybody else. Just because you don't want any of your makeup to get on others or wear out throughout the day. So this step also helps if you have oily skin. This is gonna keep the makeup from absorbing and shifting out throughout the day or the night, whatever you are doing. So this really keeps sets in place and keeps it locked. And I will be baking a little bit just under my cheek line here. For the next step, I'm gonna go ahead and bronze my skin. I'm not really contouring for today. I'm just lighting that bakage set, not really baking too, too much, but just enough to lighten that area. So what I'm gonna do is go in with the Too Faced Dark Chocolate Soleil. And I love, love this bronzer. I've been using it for a while now and I still haven't run out of this guy because this is my second one. So I'm jumping in into with that with the Morphe brush and I don't need a lot. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply this much on the brush and just dust off whatever is on top of that bakage. So again, I don't want such a heavy contour, just enough to bronze my skin.
I have to contour my nose because the dark chocolate sole is too orangey for no shade that I really want. And this is gonna give a more natural look towards the appearance of your contour. I'm taking the, the Too Faced Chocolate Sole and this is more of a cool tone brown using a B Bella MG328. I'm using the product very lightly, just tapping this and starting from the bridge down to the sides. And because my nose is considered a bull warrior's nose where I have this round tip here, I'm gonna go ahead and stop right on the sides, like so. Just doing the bridges of the nose. So right, so right. And then shading with a V right at the bottom. I don't want to carry my contour all the way down through the nostrils here just because it's going to make my nose appear larger and longer. That's what I don't want. So I just want to shorten up this area here and I'm going to create a V by doing so you're going to make this pushed in and, and this part pushed in as well. And you're going to have this highlight part here. Now taking just the excess of my Beauty Blenders powder, I'm going to do the nose and just diffuse that. I'm gonna drag the contour a little bit more in. So before I start the eyes, I like to go in and do my brows. So going in with the Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade in the shade Ebony. And I really love, love Anastasia. She has one of the best products for brows out there. So a few of you already know this trick that I do, but I like to start right in the middle. The middle tells me the story of how my brows are gonna look for that day. So I like to start in the middle just to give myself a guideline right here. And this is where I like to start. And I'll be dragging up to the brow bone here and creating a tail. Then going in and filling the beginning of the brows. And this is where you wanna go ahead and give yourself a more light hand if you do wanna fade. I like to diffuse and fade off into the beginning of the brow. You can do very, very thin, simple strokes like uh, mimicking the hairline. Going back in to the top and again starting right in the middle. That is how I get my brow. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other brow off camera and we will be right back. Now using just a regular Morphe brush, I'm gonna dust off that baggage away. And if needed, you can take that same Morphe brush and just dust some dark chocolate right in the bottom just to diffuse that harsh line. To highlight my face, I like to use the Sleek Makeup in the shade Solstice. And this is a highlighting palette 32. And this is such a gorgeous palette just because of the shade range and the pigmentation of this palette. So on the Morphe M501, I'm taking this soft peach shade right here and applying that towards the high ends of my cheekbones. You guys have no idea how amazing Sleek Makeup's highlighters are. They're so stunning. So I like to apply it just at the high ends of the cheekbones and do very soft circle motions when I do like to spread out to the highlight, just to give more of a natural glow, even though this is such a not natural glow. Just to make it a little bit more natural, that's what I'm trying to say. I like to round my brush a little bit, and everybody's facial structure is different. I just, for my face, I like to do little small strokes and then back and forth, bunch of wiper motions. I'm gonna put a little bit towards the temple of my forehead here. So when I don't want a lot of highlight, even though this is already so much, I like to take my brush and without any product, soak it a little bit with MAC Fix Plus and just go over the highlight. This is gonna make it a little bit more metallic and a lot more sheen on the skin. So I've been dying to use this palette on a tutorial today and I'm really excited I get to use it. So this is the Soft Glam by Anastasia Beverly Hills and it does carry 14 beautiful shades. Soft Glam is a perfect representation of this palette just because we have the shades in this range you have from a very soft daily look to a full glam, um, but you can also do a soft glam. 
I will be using the dual brush within this palette here just because I want you guys to know how to do it with this brush here. A lot of people like to use name brand brushes, but yet I will be doing it with the same brush. So going in with orange soda, I'm tapping just a little bit and dusting that off. So because this is going to be my transition shade, I'm able to carry this a little bit more higher than I want to, but not enough up here just because I don't want a full orange soda layer just on my eyes. So I'm going to keep this a little bit low and then carry this upwards a little bit higher. So in windshield wiper motions, I'm applying this towards the crease. And as I get to the outer, I want to go ahead and drag it and flick it outwards. And this is going to be with a light hand. Going back to this palette, I'm digging into orange soda here, very light handed and applying this halfway into that crease. I want to keep this inner corner light. So I'm only applying halfway and dragging this a little bit more down into this lower area of my eye. I'm doing this very softly. I'm not going in, in so rushed. I'm just doing very soft circle motions. Again, flicking a little bit out into that brow bone area. Now this part you do want to go ahead and be careful. I'm taking that brush again. I like to go ahead and build and build on my shadows. So I'm taking Sienna right at the tip of the brush, like so. And then I'm taking Rustic. And I want to be very, very careful just to keep it very low on that crease. This is going to create a lot more dimension. And by doing this, it's going to darken that area. We want to keep this low instead of creating such a darkness around the eyes. I'm keeping this low on the crease. And for my eye shape, I like to do a V. So I like to go like this and like this, and that's for my sh eye shape. From there, you can go ahead and do just circle motions, but I like to go in a V. This is gonna add a little bit more longevity to my eye. So now that I have my V, I'm doing very soft circle motions and flicking as well. So I'm blending and I'm spitting out the rest in a sense, I'm spitting out the eyeshadow. So I use all the product I have left. I'm just dusting off on my skin, just whatever is left. I'm taking back orange soda. I'm blending everything out all together just so it can be a nice degrade out into that orange soda. Now flipping to that dense side of that brush, I'm taking a little bit on rustic. And I'll be, I'm barely going to go ahead and grab that pigment. Very little on that brush. You want very, very little just because we are going to go ahead and build it. And I'm going to begin to carve out my crease on the inner corner of my eyes. Now flipping to the other side now, I'm taking Sienna and Rustic a little bit more on that brush now and applying it towards the outer corners of my house. And I'm basically just stamping this on and going halfway towards my inner lid. I also decided to do circle motions, but just stay within that little square area. You don't want to blend this too much or you're going to go ahead and disrupt this blend here. Now taking a separate umbra, I'm dabbing in at an angle to the brush and going back with that same angle right in that square area. And I'm just doing stippling motions. Once I get to the area where I flick out, I'm just going to softly do circle motions very, very softly within that square. I dust off whatever I had of that separate umbra on that dense side and going in with sultry here. I do like a metallic, so applying MAC Fix Plus and applying that just at the middle of my lid here. And stopping right at that crease. Flipping on a clean side, I'm dipping into Fairy and a little bit of glistening. MAC Fix Plus, of course. And apply it into that inner corner of that eye here. A 
if you do lose some of that pigment in sultry here, you can just dab with your finger and just apply the pigment a little bit more strongly just to make sure we do get that pop. So this Murberry is calling out to me, but I don't like to do a lot of reds under my eyes just because it makes my eyes look redder. So I like to use a Cypress Under, which is a cool tone, deep plum shade, and going right under the eyes. I'm taking a little bit of that Cypress Umber and packing this at the outer corner of my eyes just to make it a little bit more intense. And for this tutorial, I'm not going to really do any liquid liner, any eyeliner, just so I can keep it really nice being opened. It is a little bit of a dramatic glam, but yet I still want to keep it a little bit more on the soft side. So I'm going to be curling my lashes and applying mascara off camera, and I'll be back to apply lashes. So something I did forget to mention is if you do want to do a white or a cream liner in the waterline, you totally can. This is going to go ahead and make the look a little bit more pulled up and natural and make your eyes look really, really big. But... For now, I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it simple and let my natural waterline do its thing. I'll be taking the Huda Beauty lashes in the shade Scarlet, and this is one of my favorite lashes of all times. The fluffiness, the wispiness to them, and the strength of these lashes, the volumizing, is just such a gorgeous lash. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my favorite just for this tutorial. When I apply false lashes, I like to apply the glue and wait a couple of seconds just until it gets tacky, maybe about let's say 15 seconds. And I normally like to keep my eye open, have a handheld mirror and keep my eye open and make sure I get the middle placed on correctly. Like so. Then I have to close my eyes, make sure that I get the ends. there you go this is how i get my lashes on a very easy and breezy with a makeup wipe i like to clean up the residue of the foundation off my lips for lip lining i'm using the santi plus liner in the shade mauve and this is the l38 and i'm almost done with this just because this is my favorite one and i'm going to stay true to my natural lip line the outer corners and overline just a tad bit on the cupid's bow Over lip line my natural bottom lip and then stay true to my natural lip line on the bottom and the corners. And this is going to give me the most pout in the middle and give myself a more volumizing lip. Oop, this must be an Anastasia day. So taking the Anastasia Beverly Hills Liquid Lip Signature Shade Veronica and this is one of my favorite lip shades from Anastasia. What I like to do is part right in the middle and go on the lips. And I like to squeeze them and do the top layer. Alrighty, and there you have it. This is more of a soft, a bit of dramatic side, but soft glam. And I love this look when I'm going out to an event or I don't want to go overly dramatic with my makeup, but I still want to keep it very poppin' and glam. And I do love this look just because it is very smoky and it's easier to do without the extra parts of liner and over lip lining and give myself such a more time consuming look. So this is the easiest for me just to give myself outdoor and ready to go. But other than that, I hope you guys really enjoyed this look. It's very glowy, bronzy, soft glam in a way, and dramatic lashes. But I hope you guys really enjoy this tutorial. Please let me know and comment down below. And please subscribe if you have not. And if you guys do love me, give this a like. Love you guys so, so much. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.